Hello and welcome to my latest project. This time I'm going to attempt to make my own touch mark. Now if you know what a touch mark is, great. If you don't, it's basically a steel stamp. It is, it's a tool that uh, blacksmith and bladesmiths use to mark their work with their logo, with their emblem or anything like that. Now you can get these made professionally. The latest quote I got in the UK was around 80 to 100 pounds. And you can get them done uh, online through Etsy and places like that. And they're all done on CNC machines. They're very neat. They're very tidy. On Etsy, I saw quotes for about £50, I think. And they're done in uh, Russia or Eastern Europe, uh, it seems, mainly. But they look very good. Um, but I kind of wanted to do it myself because I think a touch mark is a very personal thing. And I fancy the challenge of, of making it. Anyway, that's what I'm going to try and do. I hope you enjoy it. Please, if you like, subscribe, comment, like, etc., etc. All right? Anyway, let's go. Thank you for joining me. So this is what the touch mark is going to look like, although this is a much bigger version. Um, that was my first test. And if you can see, I hope that comes across all right. So that represents an N and a P uh, in the ancient Runic alphabet. And I think that's going to look pretty cool, stamped into some metal. Now, it's probably a good moment to talk about the, the technique that I'm going to be using to transferring this design onto the EN8. I'm not going to draw it. I'm rubbish at drawing. I really couldn't draw a cat, you know, with the old circles. So what I'm using here, this is acid etched, electro etched into this steel. Um, and I've been practicing. It's 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 not easy um, I've had quite a few failures there are lots of things involved in trying to get it right um, but that's another video and there are lots of videos out there um, to show you how to do this anyway this is the technique I'm going to use so basically I've printed out a stencil which I'm going to stick onto the end of my EN8 and acid etch it and then what the, not acid etch it electro etch it and hopefully what that's going to do is giving me a starting uh, 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 start to then having to cut out more of the, the outsides of the letters and do that uh, with a mini drill um, and some uh, diamond burrs. But anyway, we'll, we'll, I'll take you through it as we go. That's the, that's the principle. So this is what the stencil looks like. Um, it's going to be very difficult film you may just see it um, it's printed on special stencil tape using a brother uh, tape printer I'll put all the details of this in the description but anyway um, I'm gonna basically put that down like this and um, I don't know how much of this I'm gonna be able to film um, without messing everything up but let's have a go Right, so this is the basic setup that I'm using. Um, a simple 12 volt car battery. The positive pole goes onto the steel. Attached to the negative is a bolt on which I'm going to place some cotton wool, which I hold in place. The reason I'm not going into massive detail here is there are several very good videos um, which showed me how to do it on YouTube already. So I will um, put a link to those online um, if you're interested in trying this process. And that's it. And next, oh, well, next, of course, is you wet the cotton wool. 
but it's important that you don't leave it too wet otherwise it's gonna leak everywhere and now we're gonna get into it So this is now my second attempt because the last one was actually um, off center and I, I really need the logo to be as centered as possible. Um, so here we go again. And basically I didn't film putting the stencil on because I found that it was really the camera was too much in my way to do it properly. can see it already appearing. I'm really not applying too much pressure. By the way, this does take a fair bit of practice. Um, I can't tell you how many I've messed up, uh, not on this particular exercise, but on blades. So do not start on your best finished blade when you try this process. And it's far from perfect, to be honest with you. Um, there are real issues with this method, not least the fact that it's very hard to stop the water, the saline solution, um, bleeding under the stencil. Um, and I think an adhesive stencil of some sort is far preferable, but then again the machines that cut, you know, um, adhesive vinyl are very, very expensive, so this is what I'm doing for now. Okay, well, let's see if that's worked. The beauty of this, of course, is I can keep going. You know, I just go and print some more stencils. Obviously, there you can't see anything at all. Looks like a total mess, and that's normal. It always does. And then, hopefully, a little bit of magic appears when you start cleaning it up. There. I hope you can see there. hopefully you can see it a little better yes I've done it again I've screwed up and I don't know if the eagle-eyed above among you would have noticed that and I doubt you will unless you're you can fluently read <coughs> ruinic uh, symbols but I have got it the right way round and of course the stamp must be reversed um, it's got to be um, a negative so to speak so it stamps are positive and I have printed it the right way round so now I've got to go and inverse the image restamp it or re-stencil it and burn it again so I'm going to do all that off camera and I'll present you with the final uh, version but yep another blooper okay so at least now it's the right way round um, but I am disappointed by the depth of uh, the etch um, it's very very shallow and I've had a few goes at it off camera and I'm really struggling to get a, a deeper etch um, I don't know why uh, I don't know what I've changed but I think it's probably giving me enough to work with. I would have liked more, but um, let's see how it goes. And um, the next stage is that I'm going to grind down the edges to get as close to this line as possible. And then I can start cutting in, if you see what I mean.
but there you see I've given myself a little bit of margin for error um, but anyway the next step is I'm going to start cutting into this with uh, small burrs in the mini drill um, but I'm not going to do that tonight because I'm getting tired and when I'm tired like most people it's when I screw up and since I screw up enough when I'm not tired I'm going to leave it till the morning all right see you tomorrow so these are the tools that I'm basically going to be using. Um, I've ordered a couple more, which I'm hoping are going to arrive in the next couple of days, uh, which are basically a smaller version of these carbide burrs. Um, anyway, I'm going to start with the diamond burrs and the carbide burrs and see whether I uh, make a mess of it or not. And uh, <coughs> it's quite a high likelihood, so let's see what happens. So it's not good enough and I think one of the reasons it's not good enough is because I was too anxious to use the burrs and um, I should have switched much sooner to a hand file, the needle file and done the work that way. And my great friend and, and mentor Dimitris has really instilled in me that uh, you have to try and do things as well as you possibly can. And to be totally honest with you, I think I really can do it a lot better than this. So I'm going to probably turn it round to the other side, um, grind it back, re-etch it, and start again. Um, it's a pain, but I think it's worth it, and I, I really want to make this look as good as I can. And in the end, if I'm not happy with the logo, then I can always change the logo, but at least I did it as best as I could. And I've got to get this uh, mindset to make it as good as I can. So what am I going to do? One, I'm going to separate the symbols a bit more so there's more um, uh, space between them, which is going to hopefully prevent this happening. But also, I'm going to try and make them smaller and wider, and I'll see if that works. So that will be the next stage. I'll do that off camera. I don't need to regrind everything and re-etch but um, I'll bring you back when it's time to do the actual carve. So as you can see, I've, I've redone it 
Um, in fact, this edge has come out a lot better. There's a lot more detail um, that I can see. It's going to be easier, I think. Um, and I've also, in the design, in Adobe Illustrator, I widened the gap between the two symbols, which should make it easier to, to, to get that, that definition down here. Um, and also this time, of course, I'm vowing that I'm not going to um, go too far with the Dremel or with the, uh, the burrs. And I'm just going to start it with those. And then when I get close to the symbols, I'm going to shift to a hand file and therefore be able to take a lot more care. Although I have to say the definition is so much better that I, I, I think I'll be able to get a bit more done. Uh, the most difficult bit, actually, the bit I'm really nervous about, as you might imagine, is this gap here. Um, that's going to be really tricky, I think. Um, I'm going to see if there's a way of maybe going in at that angle and that angle. But anyway, we'll see. We'll play with that. I'm very keen not to mess it up again. All right. So it's kind of frustrating me that I, I can't really see the work I've done to see if it would work. So I decided to put some marking blue on it and see if I can just take off on the very surface of the design. This shows up actually on this, but I'm I'm pretty pleased with it. Um, could maybe go a little bit deeper on this one to match that one, um, but a maker's mark, touch mark is you know doesn't have to be the most perfect thing, but I am trying to make it as good as I can, and and I'm pretty happy with that. Um, I might tweak it. So this one was the last one, um, which I wasn't happy with. <clears throat> and uh, let's see if this one is better. Well, I would consider that exponentially better.
Tu go que ouais. It's not perfect, but you know what I'm, I mean, it's a touch mark, and it's my touch mark, and the only problem is I am showing it to you upside down at the moment, it should actually be the other way around, so let's see if I can do that without incinerating my hands. There, you can see that. Um, so I think part of the practice is going to be actually uh, holding it correctly. I'm not sure that my idea of wrapping the, um, the steel around it is very accurate. I might end up doing it by hand actually um, with a big glove. Anyway, result. So thanks very much for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I certainly enjoyed that project quite a lot actually and it's, it's very satisfying to put my mark on a piece of steel. Um, a couple of words of warning though, when you're using those carbide burrs or even the diamond burrs on the steel, the stuff that comes off it is pretty horrible. It's these tiny little steel filings and I noticed they kind of went down my shirt and um, in fact went into my fingers when I was cleaning it. That's why later you saw me using a brush. Um, I was wearing breathing apparatus obviously and eye protection but if I were you I would wear something around your neck as well to make sure that stuff really gets everywhere and it's pretty unpleasant and also it seems to be magnetized which doesn't help anyway just a, a quick uh, word of warning there but otherwise um, have a go at it it's 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 fun it's it's uh, doable as you know if I can do it you can do it anyway please if you enjoyed it please like please comment um, and of course please subscribe and today is Christmas Eve um, 2020 and I want to wish you a very happy holiday season and a happy new year. Take care.